television, and we are pleased to be joined by Kevin Payne, the CEO and president of DC United. Tonight, you guys are playing a Mexican team at RFK Stadium at 8 o'clock. Kevin, welcome to the show. And a lot of people want to know right off the bat, you're at RFK, but many people are talking about Poplar Point within the soccer community, within, within the DC community right now, and want to know what your take is on, on the progress of the talks between the team and its ownership and the DC City Council. Well, the first point I'd like to make is that the talks are continuing. So the story that uh, was in the Post and was repeated elsewhere last week, I'm not sure where that came from. Uh, we had a series of meetings on Friday with the uh, city and a series of meetings yesterday and, uh, and, the, and on Monday with the city. So talks have certainly not collapsed. We've been very clear in our position for a number of years that we want to be in Washington, D.C. We want to be specifically at Poplar Point. Uh, a location that the city brought us to and asked us to build our stadium at some years ago. And uh, we want to be part of Ward 8. We've developed a lot of friendships in Ward 8. We really like the people there. I think that they like us. And I'm very confident that uh, we will end up at Poplar Point and remain here in D.C. Now, D.C. United has done a lot of work throughout the years within Ward 8, as you mentioned, the kicks for kids and everything with United for D.C. that has done great work in Ward 8 over the years to cultivate those relationships in the area where you hope to put the stadium. But I'm curious, Kevin, as to why you guys decided to put on your website your actual stadium plans and your proposal for the area around the stadium at the time that you did, and that was not too long ago. Why did you wait till then, and why did you decide to put it out then? Well, we put it out there because we were already talking with people in the community about those plants. So they weren't really uh, private anymore. They were pretty public. Uh, a lot of the media doesn't necessarily go over to Ward 8 very often, so they weren't in on those meetings. Uh, but the community there knows what we're talking about, and we thought it was appropriate that the rest of our fans did as well. Now, you've, you've also stated that you guys definitely want to stay in D.C., but if you have to move outside of the district, if that's the way it has to go, that's the way it has to go. Are you at the point now where you need to start exploring other options for a stadium for the team? Well, we've been, again, pretty consistent in our position. We've been approached by other communities, and we've said to them our preference is to remain in D.C., and we want to see this process out. Um, I think the district understands that at some point we may need to consider other options. We have a business to run. Our team cannot survive uh, long-term in RFK Stadium, just as baseball could not. So uh, we will look at our options, but I think, you know, as I said the other day, we've been pretty bad negotiators in the sense that we've always said we want to be in D.C., and this is our first choice, and we really don't want to play one community against another. We want to be in D.C. Kevin, how much of the fallout from the whole baseball thing and the, and the stadium deal there hurt your ability in this, or, or has it? Well, I don't think it helps. Um, you know, there was a, a tremendous amount of community uh, enmity toward the baseball deal, as you know, and that's not a secret. Um, and now, our proposal is a completely different one. Uh, in our proposal, we pay for the stadium with our own money. We go at risk on that. So, uh, you know, I think that our, we've tried to structure a deal that's a completely different relationship with the city than what baseball had. And certainly the way we've gone about that, uh, all those conversations has been dramatically different from the way baseball did. Um, and I think the way we've conducted ourselves over the years in the community is quite different from the way baseball conducts itself. So uh, we, we like, in a sense, the comparisons, but, uh, but there's no question that the idea of building a new stadium in the district was made harder for anyone uh, by the baseball transaction. Kevin, tonight, uh, Monarchus uh, Marilia comes in as part of Super League to take on DC United at RFK Stadium. The DC United fans love going to RFK for many reasons in that they find it to be a great place and the team seems to like the atmosphere that's created there. But realistically, how long can DC United play at RFK Stadium if they want to be a viable franchise in MLS? Well, I don't know how long exactly, but uh, we need to have, uh, we need to know what our future is going to be long term and whether that's you know, the beginning of the 2010 season or sometime approximating that, that's when we want to be in a new stadium. We lose money today at RFK Stadium. We will make money in a new stadium. The delta is very significant. So uh, to the extent that, you know, each month that we remain in RFK is another month that costs us several million dollars. All right, Kevin, changing topics. You know, when my parents used to go on vacation when I was little, they would always come back with little knickknacks if they went somewhere to represent from where they came. I understand you just got back from Argentina. Did you bring DC United fans <laughs> any presents with you on the way home? Well, I have a very nice uh, Argentina jersey that was signed uh, to me from a very prominent player from Argentina. But uh, that's about it right now. I, I think that we're still in the running for the player. 
um, and we'll know very shortly whether or not that's going to happen. And that would be Juan Sebastian Verón, am I right? Well, I've not confirmed for anybody yet who the player is. Let me just say that the player we went to speak with was very interested and intrigued by our proposal, and I think we'll know uh, within a few days whether it's possible to happen now or whether it might happen in the future. And it has been reported in the press in Argentina that you had a, a, a fine dinner with the player yet to be named. Uh, I'm just wondering, what, what is fine dining, fine cuisine like in Argentina? When you go out to a nice meal, what do you order in Argentina? Well, uh, you, you order beef. <laughs> and uh, even if you don't order beef, you usually get beef. Um, <laughs> but it's the best beef you've ever had, I'll tell you that. And the restaurant uh, that we had, interestingly, uh, ironically, I suppose, the restaurant that we were at uh, is in an area called Porto Madero, which is on the canal that comes off the river. And it's the hottest real estate location in Buenos Aires. There's probably 10 million square feet of new development going up there now. Uh, the hotel we were at didn't exist two years ago. Uh, and now it's fully booked on a regular basis. So uh, it was a great, it was a very early lunch. We, we ate at 1 o'clock, which is early in Argentina, because uh, dinner usually doesn't occur until about 11. Now, obviously, D.C. United has had much success in taking players from Argentina. Christian Gomez, a prime example, uh, last year's MLS MVP. But it would appear as if you, if you want to bring a, a famous player from Argentina to the United States now, it's going to cost you a lot more money than it cost you to get Christian Gomez here. Is the new ownership willing to go out and spend a lot of money on a designated player, a Beckham rule player type of player? Yes, absolutely, and particularly if it's the right kind of player. Um, we're not looking for flash and sizzle. We're looking for a player that's going to make our team better and is going to bring leadership and a championship pedigree to our team. It's, you know, we don't change our, uh, our posture on what's important in this organization just because it's a famous player. Uh, we are all about winning, and we're about the team first. So when we look at designated players, and the particular player I spoke to uh, in Argentina understands that fully, and the reason that we're looking at him is because that is his reputation. He's a guy who's won championships everywhere he's been. He cares first about the team and second about himself. We like to say it's about trophies, not T-shirts. Well, the latest trophy you guys are going after is this brand-new Super League trophy, uh, the winner to get a million dollars to the winning club at some of the best U.S. clubs against some of the best Mexican clubs out there. Tonight you get one, you get Club America, maybe the most popular team in Mexico, coming in Sunday night. How excited are you for the prospect of this new tournament? Well, this is a, a tournament, a, a format that actually I've been espousing within the league for six years. Uh, and I'm glad it's real. It's finally happening. The league worked very hard to get this tournament established. It's very important for us. Uh, the Mexico-U.S. rivalry is a real one. Uh, it obviously exists at the national team level. And we now need to create it more uh, on a more regular basis at the club level. It was a great start for the tournament that the Galaxy knocked off Pachuca, the top team in Mexico, and that uh, Dallas tied Chivas, uh, albeit a Chivas team that was missing some players. I know those players will be back for their next game in Superliga. Um, we're very excited about this. We take these international events very seriously, and we take the rivalry with Mexico seriously. One last thing, Kevin. Can you do something to work on these guys' hammies? You've got so many guys with hamstring issues right now. Yeah. How are you going to feel the team the rest of the season like well, this? You know, it's really uh, it's very unusual. Uh, last year, we had a great year in terms of muscle injuries. Uh, we're trying to figure out. We've spent a lot of time with our doctors and our trainers trying to understand what might have caused this, whether it's just purely a coincidence or uh, if there's something we're doing in training that's causing it. I know Tommy Sohn's very concerned. But, you know, we're, we're going to be playing down some men tonight, particularly Jaime Moreno, who's arguably our best player and, in my, my belief, the best player in the history of our league. Uh, but we're gonna, we've got some good young players that are going to step in, and I think that we'll battle, and, uh, and we look to get a result tonight. D.C. United versus Monarchus Morelia in Super League action tonight at RFK at 8 o'clock. That's kickoff at RFK Stadium. Kevin Payne, the CEO and president of D.C. United. Kevin, thank you so much for coming on Washington Post Live today. Thanks very much, fellas.